What is up, Just Sayers? Ooh, that feels good to say. Uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Just Sayin' Podcast. Um, I'm just wanting to just give you guys a quick shout out. I have seen all the love and the likes and the sweet, sweet comments over the past crazy week. And I just want to give you guys a huge shout out. Thank you uh, to the Just Sayin' Facebook group. You guys have been awesome and Instagram as well. Uh, the comments have been great. I haven't been able to get to all of them, but I do see them and they are much, much, much appreciated. And um, we're just going to keep giving you guys great episodes each week, uh, wonderful occasional guests. And my occasional guest this week is one of my faves. She is the darling of the comedy scene right now. Um, you have seen her on the Bad Friends podcast with Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino. She is currently on tour with the Bad Friends podcast tour, and she's headlining all across the country. She is the darling of Phoenix. <laughs> Make some noise. <laughs> For I mean I don't I mean Jetski Johnson Jesse Jetski Johnson everyone, um, but now yeah yeah we Hi. that's what we do here um, and now you have a new nickname as well. Well, it's been this for over a year now. Um, when I went on Bad Friends, oh, and thanks for having me. Also. Of course, <laughs> that yes. was a lovely intro. Well, I try. You know, <laughs> I like lifting people up. I'm going to um, have uh, Jesse Jetski Juicy Darling Johnson. I'm sorry, Juicy? <laughs> juicy is my nickname that Andrew Santino gave me about a year ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people will comment about it, but I, yeah, I don't really, that's not my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Juicy just kind of hits hard these days. So, good. I'm glad you're here. Um, what is What has it been like going on this, like, massive tour of yours, first and foremost? Because a little known fact... Uh, you used to be a door person here. Mm -hmm. Is it door person? Door guy. Door guy. Yeah. <laughs> but you identified as a door guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like door guy and door girls. It was door guys. Yeah. It yeah. just was, it's been door guy since the dawn of time. Yeah. And there's a legacy with that, with like Jim Carrey being a door yeah. guy, Mark Marin and Bobby Lee. So it's like, okay, now that they're letting girls be guys now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to keep that title. And I think all the other girls, now there's like six girls working here. Yeah. Too. And they're uh, some of the badass chicks I've ever met. Yeah. They're so awesome. That's just like the, the title of the position. But I, uh, I think because it comes with such a legacy, we all wanted to keep it. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of talk when I started here too. Like, what do we call it? Uh, yeah, I remember that because it was like, I don't, because I don't think girls used to be door guys. No, there, I remember like, I think Sarah Mosajabi was a one and Jess Wellington. And, yeah. uh, and then, it kind of, and they then were that the, was it. Yeah. And then after the lockdown, Logan Gunselman got hired and then I was the second one. And now it's, you know, a whole cast of people. It's great. I was never a door guy. You and skipped I right past it. I did. <laughs> but I think it's probably for the best. Yeah, I can't imagine. I could, right? You couldn't see me as a door guy. Cleaning up puke. <laughs> Cleaning up puke, parking cars. I know. That's like oh. one of the best things and scariest things that I did when I worked here because uh, you get to meet everybody, mm -hmm. which is great. Like you're the first person people paid regular see when they walk in. Yeah. And uh, it's hard for me to just like walk up and start talking to people. So that was great. But there was a lot of pressure. Like one time when you were leaving, your what card did didn't work. And oh, I was right. like, yes. was, was it me? I don't know. But I think the battery just died. The battery but, totally yeah. just died. And I was mortified. And you were like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's like, what's well, not your fault? But like, it was my weird. career is over. I know. <laughs> Ruin this woman. No. <laughs> No, that was so weird because it was working totally fine. And then I was going to leave and it was like, I'm like, oh my God, I can't. And I think like the next day I had to go on the road or I had some gig the next of day. Course. And I was like, well, we'll figure it out. And it got fixed. But or yeah. like one time Don Bear sped in and hit Frank Castillo's car. And you're like, while you're working, you're like, uh oh, I hope this doesn't get pinned on me. But yeah, but yeah. you're on to bigger and better things. And that's why I had you on because I just think you're. So sweet and wonderful. And and tell us how the tour has been going for you. as Because I feel like Andrew and Bobby together are magical chaos. Yeah, and they're, they're so different, but mm -hmm. successful in their own right. So, like, I've learned so much from them um, in different, like, business side, comedic side. Like, um, but the tour itself was three months. Yeah. And we'd go three weeks on, come back for a week. And um, I just... In that time, I think I grew so much comedically and personally and learned how to tour and what that's like. And so now that I go on my own, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a little more confident in what to do, how to do it. Um, 
and yeah, they treat me really well and I feel glad to be part of their podcast. And It's huge. It's like such a huge thing. And I just think that's so great. It's always nice when other comedians can have your back and yeah, you help need, you grow. <laughs> you, you need mentors. Yes, you do. Yeah, you, you need people that like are invested in you. Otherwise, it's like... What's the point of this? Yeah, you yeah. feel so lost. And like, uh, and then in turn, it makes you want to can get to a point in your career where you can do that for other people. And that's how comedy should work. It's mm-hmm. a family. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to treat people like family or else you're, you're just going to wither away. It's... Ah, the more you know. The more you know. (laughs) God, well, glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. I mean, is there anything that you would like to talk about that you are aware of before we get into the stories, as far as like pop culture stories that are on your mind? Do you have any questions for me? Um, Okay, well, I want to talk to you about this Oliver Anthony guy. Yes. Because I was at the uh, Comedy Mothership last week, Mm -hmm. which was awesome. I had a great experience there. And I was at Mitzi's, which is the bar there. Yeah. And um, Tony Hinchcliffe was like, do you know who that guy is next to you? And I said, no. And he goes, that's Oliver Anthony. And I didn't know who he was. And I felt like such an idiot after because he ended up playing a show in their, their big room. And it was all over social media the next day. Yeah. And I just sometimes feel like I'm living under a rock. But this guy's like awesome. I looked him up after. Well, for those of you who don't know, Oliver Anthony was the... First of all, he sounds like a... Um, he sounds like he has like a cooking show on like, you know, Discovery <laughs> Plus. Like cooking with Oliver Anthony. It's very like... It's those two, Anthony and Oliver, very like pristine names, you know? But he was in the news recently because uh, he had a song. Yeah. I don't remember the name of the song. It's not coming to me right off the top of my head. But it caused a lot of, not scandal, but it was just a lot of like, um, it was it was pretty much an ode to the working class man, right? Yeah, he reminds me of like a modern day Bob Dylan. Yeah, so, oh yes, it was called Rich Men North of Richmond by Oliver Anthony. So it was kind of like a folky song. He looks like working class, you know, he's very, he looks very... Um, is he from, where is it? Richmond, Virginia, right? Obviously, if it's from Richmond, I'm going to assume. But it got a lot of press, uh, negative and positive. And I believe it jumped to like number one on Billboard or oh, something like awesome. that. that's awesome. I didn't know it got any negative press. Well, it got some negative press just because a certain group of people were using it as an anthem uh, <laughs> for their rallies and whatnot. And then he jumped on board, much like Eminem did... <laughs> So, so uh, Oliver Anthony and Eminem have a lot in common because uh, there's a, um, a Republican candidate running for office, and he was using "Lose Yourself in the Music" that song, Hilarious. and Eminem was like, "Can we not? Let's <laughs> let's not do this. Don't lose yourself." So he actually said, "You know, hey, stop using my song for this. Can I just have a moment just to speak up for the working class and give them an anthem?" So I applaud him. And you saw him, and did you say hi to him? No, I didn't know who he was. You just thought it was just some. Lumberjack man? I guess. I don't know. He fit in in Austin. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, right. If you're in Austin and you see that, you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Yeah. I need to get down to the mothership. I haven't seen it. I haven't been there yet. I I really like it. It's kind of like a parallel universe to the store. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Gen- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> but like, I'll, but in, in the sense that like, it's, it's comedy first, but it's a lot of great people and it's just, it's. It's a fun place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All right. Well, let's get into some news, shall we? These are the top stories of the week. Uh, Labor Day weekend uh, was this weekend, and I spent a lot of my weekend uh, by the pool. I just did it. It was rainy, too, like Saturday, and I was like, not like this. I'm like, (laughs) the planets are in retrograde. Like, the moon is blue. Like, everything was just chaotic over the weekend, and I just wanted to relax and chill by the pool, and I did it, and it was fine. What did you do? Did you do anything fun? Yes. For, well, Friday, I hung out at the store with my friend Shangi, and mm-hmm. that was really fun. She's a fashion designer, so she was like, everybody kept complimenting her outfit. And uh. was like, she designed it, but that was cool. And then um, Saturday, I literally just stayed home and cleaned, and it w- felt so good to be a normal person. I love cleaning. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. It's so therapeutic. Just it's- put on put on a good... Oh, my God. There is a playlist on Sirius XM called Mom Jeans, okay. which makes me think of Christina Pazitsky yeah, yeah. right off the top of my head. But it's a playlist and it's early 80s and early 90s, like soft rock. <laughs> 
it gives me life. It is so much fun. So you're just cleaning and like Amy Grant will pop up and like, it's just like, just old school, just like fun, feel good music, like the Cranberries and oh, yeah. like Sophie B. Hawkins. Ah, oh, so it's so good. Anyways, yes, it feels cleaning. good because you're like, I mean, everybody has this in their respective fields, but as like a stand up, you know, and now I'm full time in it. Yeah. You're traveling so much. Yes. And it's not even this like, rock star life it's just you're constantly on the move and so like it's just funny now like how much I value being at home even if it's just like one night used to have extreme like FOMO but now I'm just like holding on to it welcome this is when you know you're doing well in life when you can appreciate being home and unpacking and cleaning yes and giving your head space to just clear. Yes, that's just, exactly what it's, it's like. So you you take those moments, like that's why now, like I would shut this place down till like <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. Like when I first started, I was like, let's rage, you know? <laughs> and now I like do my set at like 8.30 and I'm like, good night, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'll and they're like, you're leaving? Morning. And I'm like, good evening, <laughs> sir. Until tomorrow. <laughs> Cause I did it. I'm done. I'm, I'm doing it. You got it. You got it. Like get some sleep. You got to hydrate. You got to like get in it and just relax at the end of the day. So yeah. it's good. You know that. Well, um, over the Labor Day weekend, this woman came out with a story that there's a lot of nature happening right now. Sharks, orca whales, uh, everything is trying to kill you. And I think it should, you know, I think we've, <laughs> We've just gotten to this point now where we're just like damaging this planet so much that the animals are now turning on us. So this woman was in knee-deep water in Bahia Beach, Florida, when two barbs from a stingray penetrated her back. The barbs dug three inches into O'Brien's upper back, missing her lungs by three centimeters. I know. She set up a GoFundMe page, which is great. And she showed a photo of the impalement. Look, I mean... Oh, wait. So that's the stingray? That's the tail. Yeah. So the tail... Oh. Ooh, this poor woman. Buy me dinner first. <laughs> Seriously. I didn't know that the, it came out like that. Me either. I thought it was like at the very end of it. I didn't know it was like... I like thought a, it was a bite. To it looked like a, like, like a dog wiener, kind of. <laughs> oh, my God. It's got that weird barb look to it, you know? Knee deep, though? Knee deep. But why on her back? That's what I... Did it jump? No, you know what probably happened? Do you know that meme of the three girls in the water? It kind of went viral like years ago where it's the three girls and they're in the water and they're like, and they're screaming because there's a stingray like popping up and you see their face and they're like, I'm a stingray. And it looks like a friendly face, the underside of a stingray. So I think it just kind of jumped up and then the tail whipped in the back and just triggered it that it was getting attacked and it just stung her. But like, that's terrifying. So- they snipped the stingray spine from the base of its tail. Well, way to go, guys. I guess they just killed it. I started becoming hysterical just knowing that it was not alive in me anymore and the barb was still on me. Oh, so it was a dead stingray. Is this like a bee or like a hornet? Like when they die, they can still sting you? I don't... I've never heard that, but be, they're not as common as bees. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God yeah, for now. They're, they're flying stingrays. Beware the stingrays, <laughs> right? Um, so she got this GoFundMe going. She's raised over, you know, $2,000 so far. Oh my. So the National Capital Poison Center says there's between 1,500 and 2,000 stingray injuries in the United States every year. Most of the cases are non-fatal, generally resulting from the puncture rather than the poison of the rod. You know what they say if you get stung by a stingray? Do you think there was a whole bunch of people just pissing on this woman's back? That's jellyfish, I thought. Oh, my bad. Well, then I've been <laughs> I've been peeing on the wrong injured people. I don't know who you were talking to. but I was like, I've got this. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. She's like, no, it's jellyfish. It's jelly. <laughs> you get stung and pissed on. <laughs> just stung and pissed on. What's worse? At, in public. Oh, my. I went to the beach not too long ago, and I had that moment where I, and it was a beautiful day. My boyfriend and I, we went out to, um, it was uh, Ginger Rogers Beach, a uh, beautiful beach. And the water was perfect. The sun was out. And I, I had that moment where I was like up to here and everything that just touches me, I'm like, this is it. Yeah. I had a, a rock like hit my ankle in a Malibu like last week and it freaked me out. Yeah. 
I'm I, like, I hope it was a rock. I know. We were we were walking down the shore once a uh, couple weeks ago this summer, and we saw like a baby seal yeah, I've seen swimming that. by the shore. And Evan's like, oh my God, look at that baby seal. I'm like, nope, because that baby seal is close to the land. Why? Because there's a shark out there trying to get it. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That's I, why they're coming to the shore. But now the seals will even attack you. They're just like coming out of the I water know. like, arr, arr, arr. It's... <laughs> Everything's terrifying. Did you see Burning Man this weekend? Speaking of Labor Day weekend. I just found out about it yesterday. Yeah. I don't know much about it, but it got flooded and people can't leave. It totally got flooded. Um, It was in, um, what is it called? Black Rock or something like that. It's out by Reno, Nevada. And every year people go and dress up like gypsies and barter and trade. Ugh, I'm out. I'm sorry. It's like the Renaissance Festival for drug enthusiasts. There it is. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a total just, yeah, like anything with porta potties and, and <laughs> costumes and mushrooms is just never going to end well, you know? So, um, but they've been doing it forever. They've been doing it forever. But however, the climate is on fire and the whole area flooded. And I found this out that the area in which it is on is it used to be an old lake. And so from that lake, a lot of alkaline has formed from the lake being exposed to the elements. And so when all that water came, the alkaline is actually poisonous. And once you're walking around with bare skin, it can crack your crack your feet and like give you like alkaline foot. I don't oh. know if that's the medical term. I'm <laughs> calling like it alkaline foot. <laughs> Not alkaline water, alkaline foot. Yeah, alkaline water is good. And it's and it's <laughs> toxic to your skin. And so when you're walking on it, it starts hardening layers over layers over layers over layers where it becomes like a cement. So people were, that's why you saw people with like bags on their feet because they didn't want to like oh. get their feet. And immediately my mind goes to the swamp of sadness from the never ending story. Oh, yeah. Was that not a time? Did you ever see that movie or is that too like yeah, old no, for you? I saw it. Yeah. So when Atreyu is like living his life in the swamp of sadness, yes, Artex dies, RIP. But when I was a kid, I wanted to like like play in the swamp of sadness, which says a lot about me now <laughs> that I think about it. Like he would just slip and slide all the way down. But yeah, so it is um, funny though, every year they go build this community and then burn it down. Yeah. And that's the whole, they're like a symbol of 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 what, cult society and how things always come to an end. But now that nature is doing it, it's like a problem. Nature's like, we're going to burn <laughs> this problem down. Yeah. But they didn't even get to burn the man, I don't think. Oh, I don't no. think they even burned the man. So on Monday, the festival's climax postponed twice because of the weather. It Oh, it did. It finally took place. The burning of a towering wooden effigy shaped like a man. Hence, Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> the ceremony... <laughs> way to go, guys. The ceremony, which usually features raucous dancing and ear-splitting music, sign me up. I'll stick with my mom jeans cleaning in my living room, was much calmer this year with nearly half of the roughly 72,000 attendees having left the site. So people were already getting out. Yeah, such celebrities included Diplo and Chris Rock. They got the hell out of there. My friend was like, Chris Rock had to hike five miles to get out of there. I'm like, well, at least he's getting his steps in, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, a lot of people were held there because they couldn't leave. I think... Um, uh, it says thousands of cars and trailers were stuck in the mud. I don't think they're going to be able to get them out. Um, people are saying they have to uh, postpone their departure to avoid creating an epic traffic jam. Well, that happened. It's Yeah, the town is called Black Rock City. Um, they are actually allowed to leave, I think, either yesterday. This morning. And, huh? This morning. This morning they were allowed to leave? Yeah. So, yeah, this morning. And they are now sitting in what they said was a seven-hour traffic jam to get the hell out of there. Oh, Look at it. Uh, this is why I don't do festivals. Bad trip, bad trip. <laughs> bad trip. And if you're tripping, yeah. even worse trip. Have you been to, I can't do like Coachella. No. It's so weird being a stand-up because I love being in front of a huge sure. crowd, but I do not like being in a huge crowd. I get very claustrophobic. I want to know where my exits are. I don't know if I could do a thing I like mean, that. I mean, that's why I don't like, like, I wish I could have gone to Beyonce this weekend, but again, I get, I'm like, mm. Yeah. And I would just panic on the mute challenge where she's like, everybody on mute and everyone gets quiet. Oh, shit. And if I heard people, I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> she said mute. And then I'm the person <laughs> yelling, you know? But I'm like, I, I I rally for people. I'm like, oh. But yeah, again, I can't, I ugh, just, 
You never know. Man. An, an I, alkaline foot? Get out of here. No, thank you. Well, we're going from stingray barbs. <laughs> what is this story? Oh, just wait. <laughs> you thought the stingrays were bad getting impaled. <laughs> This came out that 4,000 Americans are hospitalized each year with a foreign object lodged in their rectums. And this is the first of its kind study. <laughs> uh, yeah, this estimated that 38,948 Americans, very specific, mm. aged 15 and up. Yeah, why wouldn't they just say 39,000? 39,000. 39,948. Yeah, it's the new rent. Uh, 15 and up went to hospitals with the embarrassing injury between 2012 and 2021, the equivalent of around 38.95 per year. That's multiple per day. Yeah. Oh, you better believe it is. <laughs> Men, shocking, accounted for nearly eight in 10 cases, <laughs> one of them being Andrew Santino. <laughs> With the most common... He does that great bit about that. Oh, it's not a bit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I joke about this on stage. <laughs> With the most common group being males in their 20s and early 30s who made up a third of all ER visits. Now, I have never done this. <laughs> so some of them... Sex toys are accounted for more than half of the cases. Thank God. While other objects found ranged from toy balls or marbles to bottles, bottle caps, cans, cans. drugs, and even stationery. What is stationery? Is that like school supplies? Is that like, like journals? I was thinking like pen, like things to write with, but maybe notebooks. Yeah, I dearest didn't... rectum. That is all stationery. Yeah. I will write this note and insert it in my body. Feather quill and all. It's like a message in a bottle. Yes, ser yeah, seriously. <laughs> You're supposed to throw it out in the sea. I can't. There's stingrays with sharp barbs. I'll just hold it in here for later. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I've heard of these stories because I feel like every now and then you'll get like a pop on like a pop up on your Instagram where it's like, like a traffic cone and an x-ray, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> I don't get those. <laughs> you don't get those? Your algorithm's different than mine. I think so. Fair enough. <laughs> I Because this is my podcast. I like finding out. I'm like, what's going on? Who who are these people? I would be mortified. I want to know who's doing this study. <laughs> a freak. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, we got another one, Jim. <laughs> Rectum 911 coming this fall after the writer's strike. Um, but here's the thing. I, there was a viral video and I don't want to get morbid, but it has stuck with me for so long. Uh, Land, you probably remember this. Oh yeah. Hold on. I got to address my new, my new guys here. John has left. A lot of people were asking, where's John? You mean to clap John, at that yeah. part? <laughs> John has left. <laughs> no. Producer John, he has gotten a new job over at Funny or Die, and he has uh, left, and we wish him well. He was fantastic. We miss him here already, but we got Land here. Land and Lee, Lee Land, <laughs> are here in studio. They are amazing, so I'm very excited to welcome them officially, um, and they're just getting this going. There was a video. Land, you're totally going to know what I'm talking about. I do not recommend you Google this. It was called, remember when Two Girls, One Cup came out? Uh -huh, I never what a watched time. it. Oh, you never did? No. I saw it. Of course you did, Lan. Of course. Because we're gay. That's what we do. We're like, <laughs> what? What's coming out? Ice cream. I'm in. There was a video called um, One Guy, One Jar. Do you remember that one? How could I forget it? Thank you. <laughs> It was a guy and he sat on a mason jar and it broke. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, my. It went on too long. It was the dark web in the early stages. <laughs> it was insane. So, guys, stop putting foreign stationery up your butt. Yeah. Grow up. <laughs> um, and be like a real hero. Alanis Morissette. Now, Alanis Morissette, who I burned the shit out of that album, Jagged Little Pill, when it oh, came out yeah. in 1996... I went through that album all day, all night. Even the hidden track at the end. Yes, that uh, one is awesome. It's still... She's like a stalker going into her... In the house. house and wearing his clothes. Oh, uh, where like in a shower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I was like a young kid just being like, this woman is insane, but I'm here for it. Yeah. 
And he's like, did you get my letter? And it wasn't my handwriting. And she's just, cr oh, I love it. Um, Is that track even, I have the album on Spotify. I don't think that track's on there because it was a hidden track. Maybe it's not. Yeah. But what's it called? Hidden what tracks were that? awesome. Hidden tracks were the best. They don't do it anymore. No. But, um, um, dear, what was it called? God. Would you forgive me, love, if I danced in your shower? Yes. <laughs> Would you forgive me, love? <laughs> Cut to me cleaning. And the salt in your bed. Like, just living. I love it. Okay, so Alanis Morissette, the Canadian queen, um, is now the spokesperson for an outerwear brand called Moose Knuckles. <laughs> 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 and they debuted their fall-winter 2023 release, um, with Alanis Morissette as the lead. Along with her, the campaign features Euphoria actor uh, Javen Walton, I hope I'm sorry, or Javon Walton, professional skateboarder Beatrice Domond, and Toronto-based music artist Mustafa the Poet. Now, <sighs> I think it's kind of interesting that it is, the name is amazing. Uh, so... <laughs> It's an expensive urban setting. The release illustrates the buzzing life of city dwellers as temperatures drop. The puff style jackets remain prominent across the campaign while Morissette sifts between street walkers on a crowded sidewalk <laughs> and commuters pack themselves in subway cars. It's the Michelin Man silhouette that put the <laughs> brand on the map, going head to head with the Lux label Canada Goose. But here with Morissette's hand in her pocket, I see what you did there. Ooh. Of a belted down parka, it's clear moose knuckles <laughs> might be pulling ahead in cool factor. Now, does anyone know what a moose knuckle is? Uh, yeah. And by <laughs> anyone, I mean juicy. Write a comment if you know. Right. <laughs> Do you think Alanis knows what a moose knuckle is? She has to. Well, because she got paid. Yeah. But I mean, it's a funny, catchy thing, but like, would you have a camel toe line? <laughs> like it feels the same. There, very that. What would a camel toe be? If a moose knuckle is a puffy jacket, what would a camel toe be? Um, <laughs> a shoe line. <laughs> a shoe line, like a croc. I guess it just Some sounds desert, like a desert bad footwear. Idea. <laughs> yeah, for Burning Man. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Put on your camel toes. The alkaline mud's creeping in. Well, you could have camel toe and moose knuckle. Yeah. I mean, that's the collab. <laughs> But I just, I just, I was dying laughing. And I, here's the thing, you know, I love, I love a play on fun, sexy words like moose knuckle, camel toe, all that kind of stuff. You know, the restaurant Pink Taco? Yeah. I'm out. I know. It's been around forever. I can't do it. Yeah. It came out like, it used to be in Century City and then they moved it over here to West Hollywood. And I was like, every time I see it, I'm like, Bleh. <laughs> Because it's just like, I just see families coming in from out of town. They're like, let's go eat a pink taco, mom. And she's like, let's do it. I've been waiting. You know, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. They have one in Scottsdale, too, in Arizona. And I mean, that tracks, you yeah, know. Yeah, that does track. Like a good Arizona pink taco. <laughs> yeah, is West fine. Hollywood. <laughs> West Hollywood pink taco? No, thanks. <laughs> but I would like a lesbian brand, you know, Mexican chain. Like if it's not pink taco. Yeah, can't we have that? Let's get that started. Like, a, like, a, like. I don't know. What's that one bar? It's like, I mean, you've got like Hooters and then there's that one that's like. Oh, Tilted Kill. Tilted Kill. They're called uh, Breastaurants. Not a Breastaurant. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they're what they call them. Yeah, I didn't coin that. Where the girls come up and they're like, hey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Make that one for lesbians. Call that Breastaurants, you know? Where did I go? I think I went with, with Polly. It was me, Frank Castillo, and pa Polly took me on my first tour. It was mm -hmm. like two and a half weeks in the Carolinas, and we went to a, a Hooters or so something like that. I think it was a Tilted Kilt, but it was just, I just like ate my cheeseburger in the corner. <laughs> just like quietly. Did, Polly and I go to the same gym. Oh. And... I saw him the other... I've been, was I've he ran, on the stair step? No, I haven't uh, seen him in equipment, <laughs> but it was... Here's the thing. Never in a million years would I think that I... Let, you know, I love Polly. He's, yeah. he, you know, his mom passed me here. I As a kid in the 90s, I loved watching him on MTV. But never in a million years did I think one day I'm going to drop my towel <laughs> and my moose knuckle will be hanging out <laughs> and Polly Shore walk by and be like, hey, buddy. And I'm like, God, no, not like this. Not like this. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> I was like, oh God, no. He's like, what you doing? I'm like, drying my nuts. <laughs> what are you doing? 
That's <sighs> awesome. Mm-hmm. He's seen it all. Oh, I know. Yeah. And then, you know, I think at the end of the day, Alanis, whatever Alanis does, I'm here for. Yeah. Wait, um, so can we see what the clothes look like? Oh, yeah. Can we scroll down and see if we actually have... You're going to get a pair you after gotta, this podcast. No, you got to get one. Oh, that's it. That's a cool... That's... I mean, of course, that's exactly what she would wear. Yeah, that's She's been awesome. wearing that since she started music. Yeah, I thought it was the actual costume at first. That's so funny. The Michelin Man out silhouette. You yeah. would never think that's cool, but seeing it, it is cool. But I love that, like, that would be me. I'd be the guy dressed in the moose mascot because <laughs> I used to be a mascot in high school. What were, What was it? I'm so glad you asked. I was the cougar. Whoa. I was the cougar in high school. That's awesome. And I, I actually went to cheerleading camp, like, my senior year. And my my friend Marjorie and I, there was two mascots. We were two cougars. And we went to, a, like, a like a 5A school. And our mascot names were Neiman and Marcus. Love it. <laughs> You named it? No, that was that was the name. <laughs> it was a prestigious, a prestigious high school. And we went to cheer camp our senior year and we had to compete with all the other carnival mascot people. No way. And we like a won free convention. It was, I mean, that was I mean, that movie, what was it? The mascots that came out with Brad Brad Williams was in it and all that, where they were mascots at camp. That was exactly that. Oh my God. And Marjorie and I won best mascot in the state of Texas and most spirited mascot in the state of Texas. So we cleaned up. <laughs> That's awesome. Take that, Moose Knuckles. Speaking <laughs> of, here's a guy who will not stop showing his Moose Knuckle, Kanye West. And I just have to say, can we not? Because Kanye West... <laughs> Have you seen the, heard any about anything about this? Him and his uh, girlfriend slash wife Bianca Sensori have been on this like Italian trip for the past couple of weeks, and he was caught with his pants down during a boat ride in Italy. Um, and he gave onlookers quite the show as his butt was exposed to tourists and neighboring boats. He seemed unbothered as he looked quite in amore with his employee turned muse. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> While riding a river taxi in Venice's famed canals, the couple appeared relaxed during the outing in which they were joined by a driver and an unidentified female friend. He was dressed in all black, <laughs> sat atop of an elevated and very open area with his pants partially down for unknown reasons. Now, I think... <laughs> I think I know a reason. You think... <laughs> that's what the internet speculated that this... I mean, look at her. Yeah, that... Mm -hmm. Oh, and here it is. That's there it is. Oh, is it? That's his ass. That yeah. Which he, I didn't know he had such a big ass. Well, I mean, not in a bad way, but it's like I didn't. I mean, I've never thought of. I never want to see Kanye <laughs> naked or any. It's like not. He's not one of those male celebs that I like. Hmm. I wonder what Ye looks like naked. No, so this, funny. This should be nominated for Picture of the Year uh, yeah. for Time Magazine immediately. This poor woman is being held hostage. Her hair is shellacked. Her eyes are <laughs> dead as they should be. He is just holding onto the back of her head and his pants are down and it's that position. At least he's wearing a mask. You know, cope, it's back. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. There is a spike in strains. We actually got six new strains since we've been sitting here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What if I, he was just had to take a shit? On a gondola? <laughs> and he's like, here, sit here so it looks like it's something No, else. I think this is like, <laughs> I think he's getting canal beach. <laughs> I know, but maybe he's staging it because he has to shit. Well, Kim Kardashian took to her social media and she was like, I'm so embarrassed. You know, uh, this is awful. And I get it. Like, I would be so mortified. Look at who's that guy. That's, uh... <laughs> 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 That's just that guy. He, uh, he, you know, that guy is always at the wrong place at the wrong time. He's like, oh man, I, he's talking to his daughter back home, and he's like, well, you're never gonna believe it. I, uh, I see Yay on a boat. Yeah, and he looks disapproving. For do we? Ha can we scroll down just a little bit? Oh yeah. Wait, is there crack? No. There's not even crack. Oh, they blurred the crack. Okay. <laughs> but look at all these guys. All these guys are just. She and her shoeless husband held hands. Shoeless husband. You know what he needs? A good pair of um, camel, toes. Uh, camel toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They held hands as they strolled the streets with their mystery companion who was dressed in an all black ensemble complete with matching sunglasses. Well, this all happened. They have been banned officially from ever riding a gondola 
whatever in Italy again. No way. Well, it's been stemming because he dresses his girlfriends because yeah. he's straight. Um, and <laughs> they're weird outfits. It's too. so bizarre. We saw the condom outfit that she had to wear. Yeah. Remember, she was like all tucked up. And um, that outfit. That outfit. <laughs> and so he. They were in a lot of a lot of heat because she was walking around Italy in like these like nude yeah, bodysuits. And they're like, what are you doing? You can't like we have like rules and there's children around and what are you doing? So I think this was the uh, straw that broke the camel toes back. Ooh. Um because now they have been banned from boats. Could you imagine could you imagine being banned from a boat? No. I would be mortified. It's yeah. like he wants to be a heel in every country. Yeah. I mean, what what are I think uh that he needs to now uh have trigger warnings for anything that's Kanye related. Like if it's like Kanye in the grocery store, you know, 18 and up only can view this post because it's like, <laughs> oh, he's he's teabagging the vegetables you at know, the grocery I'm store. I'm pretty sure he saw me do stand-up. Mm -hmm. He went to Oxnard Improv to see Jesselnick. He like when Kanye out, did. Yeah, he was like he. Kanye when, went to Oxnard when Kim Kardashian was uh, dating Pete Davidson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they saw her. No, they're not. Where have you been? <laughs> My God, I don't keep up. I with have this. to help you. I only know this because I, I he was at this show and he he tweeted that like, Anthony Jostic is my favorite comedian and it, everybody was speculating he's just like talking shit about Pete Davidson, oh. you know, like another white comedian. But then he went to the show and saw Jostic in Oxnard. And um, we didn't know until the next day. The staff was like, hey, did you know Kanye was here yesterday? And we were all kind of like, why wouldn't you tell us this? Wasn't he here? <laughs> but then there there, he, uh, there was like a picture of him in Oxnard too. Yeah. He, I don't know if he was here. He was here like a month or so ago, I think. It was like, yeah. And he was just like, oh, yeah. I remember? Saw him. Yeah, I was working back door. It was when Chappelle was up in the belly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did see him. He, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, we were just like, oh, okay, well. Can't wait to see his crack leak online in a couple months from now. <laughs> crack leak, isn't it? Oh, crack leaking. <laughs> God. Well, good luck to Kanye. I mean, put your pants on, dude. Um, next up we have, we're gonna get we're gonna make things a little steamy here for a second. Whoa. I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> There's a new ro romance novel sweeping the nation. <laughs> uh there is a Amish romance novel. Oh, it really is sweeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, <laughs> It's more churning. It's churning the it's nation. It's churning the headlines this week. There is an Amish romance novel with some touching and no sex. Too hot for the church elders. So this woman, look at her. <laughs> look at her. Just, she is the Sex in the City, Twilight, uh, Fifty Shades of Amish. Oh my God. Uh, writer of her time. <laughs> 50, 50 Shades of Butter. <laughs> Turn on, queen. This romance novel is flying off the shelves that the elders have built themselves, but its content <laughs> is bugging out the traditional conservative church community. Lifelong community member Linda Byler, 65, penned The Tapestry of Love, literally in a notebook after beginning writing her career at an Amish newspaper. Aww. So uh, the second novel in her New Directions romance series chronicles the romance between two traditional Amish youngsters in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and has sold close to a million copies. Whoa. But she's gotten blowback from some community elders who claim the success of her tome is fueling sexual abuse, she told the outlet. You know it's good, though, I gotta say, <laughs> because all they got is imagination. That's all they have. <laughs> That's all they got. You know, they are like reading by candlelight, <laughs> feeling feelings. They are very tame books, the lady says. <laughs> She's uh, uh, dismissing comparisons to the sadomasochistic Fifty Shades of Grey. There's nothing unclean in them. There is some touching. My publisher said it would have to be discreet and a little bit of a kiss. She says there's no sex in the book. <laughs> I take back what I said. <laughs> there's no sex in the book. And but the elders are furious. You know why? Because she's a woman. Oh, that's why. If an Amish man wrote it, if an it. Amish man wrote it, it would totally be fine. <laughs> we could just bounce along in our buggies and enjoy the ride. But no, 
This woman is just trying to make a living. But uh, she began, this woman began newspaper reporting when her husband went bankrupt and later transitioned to bu publishing books for children before writing about the amorous side of Amish culture, where premarital sex, not to mention divorce, cars, electricity, cell phones, and fun are forbidden. So she'll never see this. No, she'll <laughs> never see me talking about her and, and saying, we stand you Amish queen. Oh, look how Look sweet. at this, the tapestry of love. This is just, this is, this is an American girl doll this waiting to like happen. a young adult book. Yeah. Garment of praise. She's like, today Ooh. I went outside and looked at the sky. Witch, burner. <laughs> too sexy, too, too sexy. Too sexy, <laughs> she's looking at the sky and using her eyes. Scorch her. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Today I used my imagination. Enough already. <laughs> oh God, it's good they didn't go on the internet, or they mm. don't go on the internet. They they can't at all. They so handle it. romance novels have been a thing in the uh, Amish community, but in the last ten years or so, romance novels have become wrong in the community. Romance novels are looked down upon by a lot of the younger generation. No, they're not. They look at them negatively on account of a lot of molesting and troubled people in facilities where they go to get help. You guys. Mm. I'm still here for 50 shades of butter. Like if you're going to if they're <laughs> yeah. afraid of touching and like no sex, Amish queen, give them hell. Give <laughs> them hell. Yeah. Leave the commune and give them hell. So, props to her. I hope she does well. Uh, we have to do an in memoriam. Oh, yeah. In memoriam. They always say that like celebrity deaths come in threes. We lost Bob Barker last week, which I had Adam Ray on a couple months ago. And not to be disrespectful, I honestly thought he had passed away already. <laughs> and oh, Adam, I thought you meant Adam Ray. No, Adam like, Ray. No, 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 no. I thought Bob Barker. I was like, oh yeah, Bob Barker. You know, when he passed away, he's like, he's still alive. And I was like, I think I mixed him being replaced by Drew Carey. And I was like, oh God, I felt like such an idiot. Wait, Drew Carey's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but okay. he he took over Bob Barker's uh, <laughs> oh, right, 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 Price right, is right. right. Yeah. So everyone had a cup of soup and stayed home that day and played sick and gave a nice tribute to Bob Barker. Then over the weekend, we lost Jimmy Buffett, which Jessica Wellington told me about. She's like, y'all, oh, yeah, Jimmy Buffett died. <laughs> y'all, Jimmy Buffett died. I don't know if y'all saw this. That's Jimmy. what I found out too. I know, Jessica Wellington. <laughs> yeah. She's got her like lashes on and her jewels on her face. She's like, y'all, Jimmy Buffett died. And we were like, oh no. And I was like, how did he die? Did he get wasted away in Margaritaville? They're I making mean, a lot of money at Universal, you know it. Oh my God, Universal, <laughs> everything. So he died of age 76. Um, uh, according to a statement, his social media and website, Buffett died around, surrounded by his loved ones. He passed away peacefully on the night of September 1st, surrounded by his family, friends, music, and dogs. He lived his life like a song till the very last breath and will be missed beyond measure by so many. I know. I was kind of sad about this because I feel like, especially in the South, I never knew Margaritaville as like the original song because there was always that line in Margaritaville where it would be like, searching for the lost shaker of salt. And everyone goes, salt, salt, <laughs> motherfucking salt, which I, I don't know <laughs> any other spice that has gotten a tribute. No one's yelling, pepper, cardamom, cumin. <laughs> like no one, it's salt, motherfucking salt. And, we, and everyone stopped and shouted out salt like it was everything. So we lost Jimmy Buffett. Then yesterday we lost Smash Mouth singer Steve Harwell, um, who retired from music in 2021 and entered hospice care for liver failure on September 3rd and had battled various diseases. Now, I thought this was extremely sad, but I did think to myself, like, it's so crazy when the outlets pick these stories up and they're like, so-and-so's on their way out. And then the next day, they're like, gone. Jamie Foxx fought that. He was like, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, thank God. I know, same. But yeah, he passed away. He had hits like Walking on the Sun, All Star, Then the Morning Comes, and Shrek's I'm a Believer. He uh, following a long battle with various health issues. Um, I think it was also liver failure due to chronic alcohol abuse. So you were going to bring your trumpet. And it didn't happen <laughs> because you don't take notes. 
So no, I took the note. I just I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna call Andrew and Bobby and say like everything was fine, but she forgot the trumpet. We were gonna play. We we're gonna play uh, uh, All Star. Oh, I know. Yeah. Somebody once <laughs> told me. I kind of wasn't feeling very musical today. It's fine. Yeah, you're in mourning. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I was too sad. I know. I was I was I was sad about that. So moving on, here's something that I can get behind. There's a Turkish airline that is banning children Hell yes. from adults only seating areas. <laughs> right? Yeah. I am here for it. Um <laughs> why did this take so long? I have no idea. Um, cranky babies are a problem. I get it. And sometimes you have to take a baby to travel. Yeah. You know, I have always thought there should be a kids only section on the plane, much like in the days of smoking on planes, which happened. Yeah. And I think there should be a kids only area. I could be wrong, but I think parents would like that too. I see like young mothers when they look so uh, stressed miserable. out. Like they're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's uh, like, they can't do anything. There's about always, it. and you know what? I, I applaud those moms that go around and they like make gift baskets for the other passengers. What like, are you talking about? I've never heard you've of You've never, this. well, they'll like, they'll make like a little, like, well, they're like crafty Cathy's too. So they'll just be, <laughs> they make like a little, like they'll make cookies in a little bag and they'll have like a note and they'll be like, I'm bringing my baby on the plane. Thank you for like dealing with this, which is smart. That is really like, nice. I've never. But those seen cookies that. better be good. <laughs> I don't want no shitty she cookies. Just put Xanax in them. So uh, oh falls yes, <laughs> even better. I'll take a Xanax cookie. Um, so uh, this Turkish airline is saying that uh, they are no longer letting kids on the plane. <laughs> so no U.S. carrier has dared ban infants, but one European airline is getting closer to crossing that line. The Condé Nast Traveler Corindon, Corindon Airlines has recently created a new adults-only section on select routes that will prohibit anyone under the age of 16 from being seated. Now, I think that's a little... Yeah. That's too much. What is this, like your driver's license? The section will be closed off from the rest of the aircraft by walls and curtains. <laughs> That's awesome. Right? Whether, lock them in. Lock them in. Whether that dampened sound is unclear. Well, it should, though it's likely that those opting in will be spared most of the mewling and cooing of tiny little passengers still eliminating in their pants. What? Because they they have diapers and eliminating in their pants. Yeah, they. Well, also there was a Delta flight where some guy over the weekend had diarrhea all over the plane. Oh. Yeah, and they had to land it because they were like, "This is a biohazard." Yeah, could you imagine being that person? I'll tell you why he had diarrhea because he was shoving traffic cones up his butt. Oh, it yes. all comes back around on the <laughs> Just Saying podcast. <laughs> So it's positioning the section as an option for business travelers who want to work in a quiet environment. Yes, the airline also asserts that parents traveling with kids can worry less about bothering such passengers now that they've been relocated. I don't have a problem with babies unless they're service babies. You what know what I mean? That? I want it to have a vest on <laughs> and it says, please do not touch yeah. my service baby. This is an emotional support baby. Yeah, I wanted to grab me a beer when I call for it's it. Like, yeah. like God intended. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, we got to teach them young. But I am totally for this because there's nothing worse. The worst would be if you're one of those kids who, like, their parents are divorced and you got to travel on the plane by yourself and you're like a good kid and now you got to sit with all the babies. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Do they, so is that what they're saying? So it's like if you're, yeah, if you're 16, yeah, if you're 16 and under. Oh, it's like the kids' table on the plane at Thanksgiving. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> and then you're that weird, awkward teen, and you're like, I have to sit with all these babies. babies. <laughs> and you just want to be cool when you go back to school in the fall. I'm for Did it, you but... hear about Stacy? She had to sit in the kids' section on the plane. Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> you're 16, too. But I don't. I fly private, Stacy. <laughs> My dad, Kanye, <laughs> took me to Italy. <laughs> Shut up, North. <laughs> well, I think this is great. Um, and I think this will eventually travel in the States because we have Jet Suite X, which is like kind oh, of like an of Uber plane. So I think this is gonna pick up. Whoa. This is weird. Can you name this? Can you name this without what's the celebrity without looking at the headline? I or if you already looked, you already looked at it? Okay. I, I don't think I would have known. So this is a very odd story. Timothy Chalamet, um, 
I guess was on Jimmy Fallon not too long ago. And Jimmy Fallon had this doll made of Timothy Chalamet. What's he doing, Jimmy? <laughs> I don't know. It's very strange. So Jimmy Fallon had the Timothy Chalamet puppet on the very first episode of his podcast, Strike Force 5, recorded with his fellow late night hosts. And that's like to help with the writer's strike. They've all come together to like make money for the writer's strike writers for late night shows. So the doll was very spot on. And the 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 maker of the puppet, his name was Chris Allen, I believe. Um he says that went viral online and caught the attention of Jimmy Fallon. So he bought it. Jimmy Fallon bought it. He bought it for like, I don't know, way too much money. And Fallon proceeded to animate the dummy with a French accent and several bits on the show. Inevitably, Fallon says the real Timothy Chalamet caught wind of the whole thing and wanted to come on the show. And he wanted to destroy the puppet. And he didn't like the bit, really. So Fallon says he entertained the idea of, well, I go, well, I got to ask the guy who we bought it from to let him know they were going to destroy it. <laughs> then Fallon says, I go, hey, we're going to have Timothy Chalamet's puppet destroyed. And the guy was really upset. He was like, no, 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 don't destroy it. And so Timothy Chalamet never got the chance to murder his miniature likeness. Or that's the story, according to Jimmy Fallon. Because now... The puppeteer master maker reached out to Vulture to break his silence. And he says, no, they paid me a good amount of money for it. But he refutes just about everything else Jimmy Fallon said. Oh, my God. Yeah. So he said, I, I made the dummy for one of my neighbors. She was like 23 at the time. She loved Timothy Chalamet. And then it got. Then she got to be a little too big uh, for her to take to New Zealand because she was not allowed in the kids section. <laughs> she wasn't allowed <laughs> in the adult section of the plane. So he says he had this dummy. He thought, well, maybe I could use it to some sort of publicity for my own business. So then, uh, of course, I guess it goes to the Tonight Show where it got picked up by Jimmy Fallon. He says, I listed it on eBay for an insane amount of money because I actually didn't want to sell it. I used Timothy's uh, birthday and I listed it for $125,000 or whatever. <laughs> he says, he, Jimmy Fallon said it wasn't. Oh, no, he said it was way too much. For yeah, no, yeah. He says, I think that's what everyone Ooh. got everyone's attention. A few days later, I checked my Instagram because stupidly at the time, I didn't realize people could send you direct messages on Instagram. Well, there's a lot of people who don't understand how Instagram works. <laughs> uh, so I saw a few days later that The Tonight Show had reached out to me a few days prior saying, hey, you know, we love the figure. Is there any way we could purchase it? So we worked out a monetary figure and the tickets to the show for myself and my siblings in exchange. Um... They said, who would you who would you be interested in seeing? Okay, so they invite him to the show. Yeah. He gets to the show. And now Jimmy Fallon says that the guy who sold him the doll did not want him to destroy it. And the guy was like, you paid me $125,000. I don't care what the hell you do with it. So now my question is, why does Jimmy Fallon want the doll? I mean, this is what happens when producers aren't involved anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You let the actors go rogue, and it's, it's getting creepy. <laughs> it's creepy now. It's really creepy. Jimmy Fallon has like an Annabelle doll, <laughs> and it's Timothy Chalamet. How many do you think he has? I bet that's what I want to know. <laughs> How many more celebrity dolls? I'm gonna. Okay, let's guess Jimmy Fallon's. Oh, I know Drew Barrymore. He's got a Drew Barrymore. He has a Drew Barrymore doll. Oh yeah. I think he also has a Justin Timberlake doll. Oh yeah. He's got to. And rumor has it, he can fit it up his rectum. <laughs> There it is, right? No. <laughs> but speaking of Timothy Chalamet, he's in the news now because he is now officially with bum -ba -da -bum 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 -bum, Kylie Jenner. Wow. I know. It was rumored um, how, that— Are they the same age? I don't know. How old are they? I have I no know. idea how, they, how old they Chalamet are. I thought Timothy Chalamet was really young, and I thought Kylie Jenner was, like, young but older than him. I keep, I keep thinking— um, is that my friend Crawford? I think. That's so funny. <laughs> Hold on. It might be. Anyways, I have, a, I have, I get what's his name confused. The little, the little boy who was in room with Brie Larson. Do you remember his name? Mm -mm. I never saw that movie. No, he was also the voice of Flounder in the Little Mermaid that came out this summer. Oh. Um, God, what's his name? Jacob. 
Yes, Jacob Tremblay. I get Jacob Tremblay and Timothy Chalamet confused. And I don't know which one is the younger one. So when it was like, oh, Kylie's dating Timothy Chalamet, I was like, she's dating Flounder? God, is there no stop to this woman? <laughs> so over the summer, it was reported that they broke up. Like Timothy Chalamet, it was kind of like oh, all over. they were together before. I guess. Okay. And now they went to the Beyonce concert over the weekend, which my God, now I had, I mean, we talked about it earlier but the FOMO was real. Like Leslie Jones, I talked to her. She had a whole outfit made. She was going to, like VIP. I saw everybody doing their like Renaissance dances. They did the mute challenge. Diana Ross came out wow. and sang happy birthday to her on her birthday. My friend Blake went. He was giving me the whole rundown. Oh I was getting God. chills with that. What he like the stories. I was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad everyone went and had a good time. <laughs> 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 Next time. I mean, she'll go on tour again, right? No? Yes, she will. <sighs> so she was at SoFi Stadium, and here we have Timothy Chalamet and uh, Kylie Jenner, and they were making out. Ooh. However, Timothy was smoking a cigarette. Ooh. Look, I didn't know. <laughs> this is them making out. All the PDA. PDA for Bay. Um, but yeah, there's pictures, there's video of him smoking. Do we have it here? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, this is them making out. Oh my God, you guys caught us. Leave us alone. This is about Beyonce and her special day. You guys, enough. Oh my God, I'm just trying to be here with my boyfriend. Uh, we're just feeling it. We're just drinking 818 tequila because it's the best tequila in the earth. It's really not. I ugh, I can't do it. I'm, I'm never, Kathy I'm Hilton's never. tequila all day. 818's just vanilla trash. <laughs> it's drinking like a bottle of vanilla Bath and Body Works hand lotion. Oh, no, no, no. Which I've done. And it gets you fucked up. So, yeah. So, he's smoking a cigarette and everyone on, online is like, oh, my God, Timothy Chalamet smokes? Like, not even a vape. Just full-on cigarette. But then he reaches over the rails and ashes. <laughs> Look. Okay, smoking a cigarette. In a stadium, which I didn't know you could do. I think look, he could do it. Huh. And there's people below? Yes. So some Wait, woman. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, he's smoking. But it doesn't look like there's people below. There's all there's people below. Because that's a tunnel. I think he's by a tunnel. <laughs> They're like, it's snowy. Oh. <laughs> no, what if it's Beyonce? And she's like, this mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're like, like smoking on Beyonce. <laughs> but first, like, I didn't know you could just smoke a cigarette in public. What if it but was I guess a everyone else is. Is this fog or is this actual just smoke coming out of everyone's mouth? They're making these, um, these uh, they're like joints, but they look like cigarettes now. There's a chance <gasps> that it could so be So maybe weed. it's weed. There is a chance. Yeah, my friend has them and they, they look. Ex oh, wait, look. The venues are drug-free and smoke-free environments. The use of drugs, other illegal substances and or smoking is strictly prohibited, unless you're rich. Yeah, that's the rule, yeah. Timothy Chalamet smoking a cig at Beyonce's birthday show for her to inhale does not sit right with me. <laughs> Did you write that? <laughs> I should have written that. That would be me. <laughs> Timothy, baby, I love you, but why are you smoking inside the stadium and literally in front of Kylie? Aww. That was Chris. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> that. was probably her mom. So, yeah, uh, everybody was there. And, yeah, her her... Nieces and nephews were there, and he's just like smoking around these kids. Other celebrities in attendance were Zendaya and Tom Holland, Justin and Haley Bieber, Adele, Lizzo, Katy Perry, Kate Hudson. Diana Ross also surprised Beyonce singing Happy Birthday. And uh, I mean, Aww. but then I think about it, and I'm like, Dave Chappelle smokes. I know. But like, what are you going to do? It's legal. It's no, it's not. <laughs> well, not smoking indoors. Yeah. Yeah. They need to, like, ban them. Cigarettes? Yeah. Just get a vape. I know. All right, we have time for one more story. Martha Stewart, I had to save this for, save the best for last. Oh, Vanessa Williams, Mom Jeans Radio, Sirius XM. <laughs> you guys, Martha Stewart is slammed as an elitist and tone deaf after revealing she removed a small iceberg from a fjord, fjord, I think it's fjord, but it's spelled fjord. And it's, it sounds like an Ikea furniture piece. Yeah. Um, what is it? In Greenland, used to use for ice in her cocktail. There we go. So Martha Stewart's been accused of being tone deaf after revealing she used a small iceberg to, to keep her cocktail cold. 
Wait, I don't understand a well, small iceberg. Well, she went to Iceland. She took a trip to Iceland and then to Greenland uh, on a ship over summer vacation. And she was sipping on drinks that were chilled by an iceberg. And the end of the... It says, end of the first Zodiac cruise into a very beautiful fjord on the east coast of Greenland. We actually captured a small iceberg for our cocktails tonight. Stuart uh-huh. captioned the carousel of photos. So, okay. I need to see what this small iceberg looked like. The only well, iceberg I know is the one that sunk the Titanic. So that's, <laughs> Well, I mean, good for her because let me tell you something. If I was on that Titanic the night it sank, you know, in the movie when it like clips the side and there's the guy kicking the iceberg, I'd be like, oh. I put it in my drink. I put it in my drink. Okay, so they took that. Yeah, they they clipped this off of the iceberg, and then they you know, kick kick it, you know, made it into an ice sculpture or something, and then they like they broke it up and put it in their drinks, which I don't think that's very sanitary. I don't know. I mean, I know the ice caps are melting, but is that really going to do much damage? It's one thing if they're melting. It's another thing if they're chilling your drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all these people were uh, putting ice in their sparkling wine um, with snaps of some icebergs in their natural habitat. But Stewart's post drew more attention for all the wrong reasons, because obviously she's a celebrity calling her tone deaf and irresponsible. People were saying, I generally love Martha and the excesses of her life because he's about, she's about beautiful gardens, homes, and food, but wealthy white people drinking their iceberg cocktails while the planet is in flames is a bit tone deaf. So as the climate warms due to the profits of a couple thousand people, billionaires vacation to the melting iceberg, scoop them up and use them to keep their cocktails cold. So... I do think it's kind of a, of course, of course she's doing this, but to her, it's what are a, you going to do? Put her in prison again? I mean, <laughs> like let her live. <laughs> what do you do? Piss off Greta Thunberg? Who hasn't? <laughs> I mean, it is, it is, uh, it does look like they're cheersing to the destruction. Yeah. They're like their- to climate change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ah, let's have our nice Prosecco (laughs) to the earth dog, you know, and then as they clink it, Martha Stewart just looks into the camera and goes, it's a good thing. (laughs) Oh, well, Jesse, thank you so much for being here. Please tell everybody where they can find you, what dates you have going on. I am so excited for this journey you're having in your life. So, yes. Thank you so much. Of course. Anybody can find me on my website, jetskijohnson.com or all things social media, Jetski Johnson. I'm touring. All my dates are listed on my website. Tickets are there too. I'm doing Arizona, um, Spokane, Washington, um, and I'll be in San Diego next year too. Right on. So (laughs) follow follow Jesse wherever you can. Um, make sure to follow my uh, my Just Saying Facebook group, which is so exciting. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, as well as uh, leave a comment uh, wherever you get your podcast fix, Spotify, iTunes, wherever it is. And we will catch you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great week, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.